pure delight with myself at how pretty that looks on camera. Have my Nathan Z good enough t-shirt on. Uh, cause I know some people will be asking about it. It's Nathan's merch and I love it. I've had two holidays with my internet family and uh, I'm feeling well motivated and back in the YouTube buzz now. I, I needed, needed a break. I definitely travel a lot more than most people, but it's usually with work and these two holidays were personal, you know, me holidays and I feel, oh, I just, I'm, I'm great, but I feel a bit out of the loop with you all. So time for a QA and a in it, in it. I'm not even English. Don't start, Mel. So I asked just for questions on Twitter and I got loads and they're very varied as usual. I'm mad into watching and filming these long chatty sit down videos recently. I'm sure you've noticed my feckin' phone screen is smashed. So it's really hard to read these questions, but I'm gonna do it. Alana asked me at this moment in time, what is my favorite lippy and why? And um. Yeah, so it's definitely this one and it's cause you can kiss with it and it doesn't come off all over their face. <laughs> Go Go Tint by Benefit Cosmetics. It's a tint, it's not like, you know, like I have it on now and then I've been biting my lips as well all day out of stress, but it's not coming off. Benefit have a few different lip tints and it kind of stains your lips rather than coating them in like a paste or something or, or a gloss like other lip products so yeah uh definitely this one for the kissing on the back it says it's a bright cherry tinted lip and cheek stain so you can obviously stick it on your cheeks for like a blush sort of thing i've i've literally lost all ability to talk about makeup because i hardly ever talk about makeup on my channel anymore thumbs up for more makeupy videos because it's just I don't know. I'm losing the will to go on with the beauty videos. Kate asked, what's your new man like? Well, okay, so you know for the past couple of years that I have been single and dating around. I left a really long-term committed relationship a couple of years ago where I was gonna settle down and stuff. And, um, you know, mostly been dating other YouTubers because they're the only people I meet. Uh, and I usually don't talk about people I'm seeing. I do feel comfortable sharing a little bit about this one and I do have his permission. His, yes, ladies. Ladies just never come on to me, okay? And I'm bad at first moves. He's had your chance, he won, okay? But yeah, he knows what I do, he gets it. And it's partly because I've known him for like 10 years or something. Uh, so a long time before YouTube. There was a decade long flirtation ship. This is us when we were teenagers. This is us when we ran a race together a few years ago. And this is us being really pretty in a pub. And this is us being gross in a pub. And this is us at a mutual friend's house party when he finally kissed me after all that time, right before he went and moved abroad to study to become a pilot. This fella makes me laugh so hard that I fart. And he's gorgeous. I mean, that caught off guard smile though. Damn arms though, that face though. My whole family pulls this weird face. Um, He's actually friends with one of my cousins. So yeah, everyone, yeah. So <laughs> what's he like? Um, we have a huge amount in common. He's a really dedicated person. Um. I have a lot of respect for him. I'm batshit mad about him. You know, he pursued me for a long, long time. And as I was just like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I don't know. These things just kind of can creep up on you. It's funny. My gut just tells me it's worth dating even while he's away studying. Uh, you know, I'm in a really lucky position with my job. I travel a lot, but like also Skype is a thing. And when you've got great communication, and long distance stuff kind of does force you to be better at communication and to um, be more dedicated and, and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, when you have good communication, texting can be great. I'm just back from staying with him for a few nights and I miss him terribly and it's exciting. And yeah, I actually genuinely think, this is why I wanted to even touch on the long distance stuff is because it was other YouTubers gave me the courage to like even bother continuing to talk after he had to go because I don't know I watch Arden Rose Arden and Will a lot of you probably know um met via the interwebs and yeah they make really cute videos about that but um Estée Lalonde one of my faves her and Aslan met online too and they had this long distancing for a long time and uh 
And yeah, and, and seeing positive examples of it, I guess, just makes you feel more strong. And also it's not like it's some stranger that I've met on a website, you know. This is someone who's been around for a long time. Um, and yeah, he's fucking great. And I'm really, really, really happy. I'm really happy anyway, but he just is making me happier. I'm gonna stop being gross now, fucking hell. Rachel asked me when will my merch be released? So some of you have seen on my website that there's like merch in the works. It's just um related to my book. So fully functioning human, almost merch. And then also like some with illustrations from the book that I just think are just really, um like anyone can wear them. Anyone who doesn't even follow me would still like the merch that we're designing and I would like to put some of the profits of it into wait so yeah at the back of my book I have listed I don't know if any of you've even seen this section but yeah there's like mental health companies and charities and organizations and ones for eating disorders LGBTQ pregnancy and sexual health sexual assault so all of that like I want to pick two of them and put some of the profit back into that but we're still in the early phases I just wanted to let you know I will keep you updated on Twitter and Instagram stories. Quite a few of you asked uh, if I plan on writing more books and stuff and I really do I want to write fiction and I, I would love to have um, you know bisexual characters and I don't know I want to explore maybe a little bit of eroticism. I'm really into young adult fantasy and I don't know how many of you read that kind of stuff but like do let me know what you'd like to see from me. I'm I'm gagging to get writing again and I plan on starting it all again around Christmas time. So hopefully give myself maybe six months or a year to, to wallop something down for years because this one just is going down so well. Ken's said, where do you see yourself five slash ten years from now? Oh, I don't like, I don't like planning stuff out because if I look at my life now, and me from five years ago or 10 years ago, the me from five or 10 years ago would never have intended my life to be what it is now or would have even guessed at it. So I kind of love that. I love not knowing if someone could tell me, oh, I'll tell you when you will die and everything that will happen in your life and stuff like that right now, I'd say, I don't want to know. I just, I love that. But saying that, um, I definitely, there's certain things I always set myself a goal and that's the only reason I get anywhere is because I'm goal oriented. But like, I think in five to 10 years, I'd like to think, what age will I be? I'm 28 now, I'm, I'm a granny. In five years, I'll be 33. In 10 years, I'll be 38. So I definitely like to think that I'll be settled down. Um, family, kids, dogs, house, travel, fun, friends, food, festivals, climbing mountains, trying mad stuff, doing new businesses, doing new businesses. I have the worst English. How did I bring out a book? I want to be really healthy. I want to be really strong. I want to have a great social circle and ha have taken up new hobbies. Like I want to learn piano and I want to do more singing. Remember I recorded me singing a song while I was doing my makeup, like the La La Land one. Oh, guys. So cringe. Tally Kerr said, what scares you the most? Oh, deep. Tally deep. I'm pretty sure I've answered this before, but definitely um, death. Not dying myself, but losing people that I love. And I've gone through it like once where someone I really loved, like a really close family member, my granny, which I've talked about. Um, When she died, I genuinely feel like a part of me died as well and it was really hard for me to deal with like I'm, I'm just not very good at, at loss and grieving and and stuff even a pet dying like I remember when I lost my cat Jamie Lannister oh no I don't want to Aoife what slash who are you dressing up as for Halloween this year I reckon because I'm on a massive Stephen King buzz at the moment um ever since you guys know I was reading it again before the movie came out and stuff. I just, I've always been a Stephen King fan though since I was really young. So I think I'm going to go as Carrie. And if you don't know anything about Carrie, you need to read the book Carrie. I'm not very into any film stuff that's been made of of, of that and of a lot of Stephen King's books. But uh, yeah. Vixie asked, would I recommend that someone with an anxiety disorder and depression get professional help and is it worth it? Yes, 
please read this book, guys. Like, I needed so much help in the past. I was so lost and confused and I didn't know what I was going through. I didn't know what was happening. If you have a bad experience getting professional help, go to someone else. You never just have to try one doctor or two or four therapists. Find someone because, you know, you're, there's only so much your family and friends can help and only so many things that they can say and do when you're in a dark place like that. They're not gonna understand psychology so much. They're not gonna understand um, things like medication or lifestyle changes that may be required. Um, and yeah, and depending on, on how bad it is, uh, there's, there's nothing your family and friends can do. Professional help enables you and gives you the tools to help yourself a lot of the time so um definitely definitely worth it sadie said what was the hardest thing to write about in your book but also what was the best thing you wrote about and for those of you who don't know um my book is kind of like it's it's not a memoir but it kind of is it's in memoir style and it's full of advice and stories and and experiences i've gone through um i definitely think the hardest thing to write about was when I was assaulted when I was 17. It's something that my whole family and friends and all them like were aware of and all. And I hate talking about it because I don't know. Like I can talk about anything on, on online. I'm talking to a camera right now. It's fine. But I hate talking about that because um, it's even when I think about it, it's, it gives me this horrible feeling in my stomach and I'm always afraid of that I might say something wrong or phrase something wrong um, because of the way it made me feel. I don't want other people to feel that way who've gone through it, which I kind of got across in the book, but like it was really traumatic. Um, long story short, when I was 17, I had an argument in a nightclub with my old best friend's boyfriend, stormed out very very intoxicated um which was stupid of me and went walking through the town and um ended up in a laneway because I was going to the McDonald's because I thought you know I figured that stays open and stuff and um two lads who seemed to be Polish and they were eating chipper chips and stuff um held me in place one of them interfered with me ripped my tights open with a key um they stopped when they heard people coming but I know they would have definitely raped me one of them would have anyway um and I was kind of like after that I don't know what it was but it was just like the idea of ever meeting up with like a man on his own um just gave me these shivers and then like even hearing keys rattling like because absolute disgusting vile fuckers who probably ended up getting away with it so like we went driving around in a police car um and you know I, which was pointless like I filed a whatever it is a complainty thing I don't know but um I was so out of it like my dad came and collected me and all that and uh came into the police station with me and I was explaining to them these guys were eating chips so just go to the chippers and go look at the camera footage in the chippers and I'll be able to identify the two lads and stuff I know one or both of them had like no hair or shaved heads or whatever and I just would have been able to but um nothing ever came of it and it just upsets me so much that 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 people that there's people in this world that have that kind of I I know maybe people have thoughts of things you know like people have fantasies and fetishes and all that stuff but when you disrespect and assault another person and you cross their boundaries like that treating them like ugh, it's like it was so casual you know what I mean and and um if that had gone worse than it did like the whole, I just see, I can't talk about this. It just doesn't come out properly. Um, so yeah, that would be the answer to that. And, and, and also I think, um, writing about the eating disorder stuff was difficult. It was a challenge and writing about losing a baby, which is something that happens to most women <laughs> and we just don't talk about it. It's like, don't talk about that. Hush, hush about that. Uh, no, I don't want to hush, hush about things. Cause I feel like that's what causes all these problems with mental health. So, read my book. Daisy, if you could eat anything in the world right now, what would it be? 
my boy's face. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, pasta. Just just pasta it's my favorite chloe said tips on how to intuitively eat after counting calories for a long time and just doing distinguishing between real hunger versus emotional slash tired hunger so yeah eating intuitively is what i do now and it basically means listening to your body and knowing when you're actually hungry for food and knowing when you're looking to reach for food to fulfill an emo like to fill up an emotional void or out of boredom or just because it tastes good and you just kind of want to eat for no reason other than the food tastes good and stuff and I now will only eat um when I'm hungry but then also sometimes like if I'm out for a meal and I really want a dessert I'll just get it so if you've been counting calories for a long time and you want to start intuitively eating first off you have to you have to stop counting calories um I don't think counting calories is inherently an evil thing it's just when it actually is wrapped up in your like view of yourself and like your whole day revolves around it then it's a bad thing but for example if someone is trying to make um a change to their figure for like a sport or just because you know they want to be stronger and they know I need to eat this many and if I under eat then I won't get there and there's loads of reasons why count calories is like fine and loads of people don't stumble into an eating disorder or or um issues when they do count calories um but if it is kind of holding you in a horrible mental state just don't do it what I decided to do was to make sure that I was eating a breakfast snack a lunch snack and a dinner and that at every meal I was getting macros that my body needs the macros are protein carbohydrate and fat um I was basing my meals around whole foods because the more whole foods you eat the less non like you know the less processed stuff you're gonna crave it's just the way we work and if you're eating like five kind of normal size meals in a day like I make loads of food diary videos if you want to kind of see the way I do it but um and I like I'll eat that stuff I won't know what calories is in it and the calories might vary day to day but you'll eventually get to a point where you're not kind of needing to binge do you know what I mean like you'll just notice when you're hungry and you'll eat and as soon as that hungry feeling goes away um so for example like eating taking longer to eat like chewing your food and sitting down to enjoy your food without distractions um making a little kind of an event out of out of your dinner like sitting down and talking to people eating rather than eating in front of the tv like there's so many little things like that that make such a huge difference we've just lost sight of why we need why we eat food food obviously yes is pleasurable but like it's it's the fuel we need to exist and run properly um yeah i think i need to do a whole video on this so let me know if that would be helpful for you down below in a comment amber said what scents do you love and make you nostalgic oh, there's so many i think the one that makes me the most nostalgic is and i wear it sometimes it's dior's fahrenheit it's a male cologne because my stepdad always wore that so growing up our house always smelled like that but also my first boyfriend wore that and so a huge amount of my teenage memories are attached to that smell because I used to rob his bottle and spray it all over me and um it really reminds me of Christmas especially oh it's so nice it's, it's like petrol to me like I love sticking my head out of the car and smelling smelling a bit of petrol Bell Lifestyle said do you ever worry as you speak so openly to your subs the backlash that comes with sharing opinions no like no free speech like we're we, we should be free and feel comfortable to talk about our own opinions and views on things I've learned and adapted my views on a lot of stuff through talking online because comments will make me reflect and point me to different resources and I'll learn stuff um I don't get very much backlash I've had like two waves of negativity come at me through YouTube oh no there's always going to be people who don't agree with you but it, at the end of the day it builds a thicker skin and it actually makes you better at kind of standing up for yourself and debating and just shit you need to be good at for like life you know you know Grace said how did you go about filming your short film as I wanted to make one but I don't know where to start lots of love that was I'm sorry that was a shit storm. I am going to be uploading a short film about unwanted pregnancy I think on the 2nd of October on my channel called Choice so it may be up now I don't know what date you're watching this but um 
it was so hard lads like oh I've never done anything like it before I I self-funded it so I spent a few grand on it myself um and we had a few weeks to come up with an idea do a script get a crew together get cast get a place to film film the thing edit the thing color correct the thing it was so stressful and so much work but it was so worth it like the end result being like just watching it and being like this wouldn't exist if it wasn't for me. That is so worth it. And I think that's going to keep me going with various other projects like that. Um, you know, I'm not all that proud of this one. I think it could have been a lot better. But Jesus, like, for a first attempt, it's not half bad, I have to say. What I would do is find another couple of people who you're, you feel comfortable working with and sit down and hash out a plan. Like, we didn't work it right it was a very collaborative effort every angle of it so the directing the script the acting like we were all chipping in and making suggestions and all that but at the end of the day I was like directing so I had like the final say on stuff um on, on all, all elements of it but I don't actually know how we made it like I think we literally just had a few meetings where we sat down and you know made lists and and made decisions together um I'm really good with teamwork I'm good at working in groups I love when ideas are bouncing off each other and stuff um I just threw myself into the deep end like I can't swim that's what I did figured out kind of how to float <laughs> I'm sorry I can't be more helpful I'll get better at this and I'll be more um full of advice in the future hopefully Lucia said how do you deal with falsely well-meaning comments that get you down about body image I'm assuming what you mean is that when people say things that where they think that they're saying a nice thing but it actually hurts you and upsets you or makes you self-conscious I think that's what you mean um, I don't know like I remember little things people would say to me like my very first boyfriend I was only with for a little while he said something about my body being squishier than his ex-girlfriend's body because she was a ballet dancer and that gave me a huge hang up about myself and he said it in a nice way he was like oh your body's so different to my ex's it's it's all squishy like he was saying it in a kind of framed positively but I think it may have been a neg. I think he maybe was trying to take my confidence down a little bit. Something I realized over the years is that I have the power to shape my own body image myself. Obviously it's shaped and, and molded from people and media and all sorts of stuff growing up and something is put into your brain of like, this is the ideal, this is what you should strive for. Um, Part, part of that is is just you know biology like we are kind of genetically wired to seek out healthy um fit people to mate with it's just the way we are but yeah all these things kind of feed into that body image but when you get older and you start to self-educate and watch talks and read books and kind of um, develop yourself develop your brain and your capacity to kind of understand what we are and what everything is around us when you get there you realize it just switches one day and you realize you have so much control over the way you perceive yourself how you talk to yourself like your positive self-talk um how much you let other people's views of your of you like affect you do you know what I mean and some people don't ever make this realization some people go through their whole life thinking that they're defined by what other people think and say about them. Um, and it's just not the case. Like, I know people who, loads of people might say, oh, they're out of shape and gross or whatever, but, like, they have a very positive self-image of their body, of their mind, of who they are. And and that radiates off them. And then, like, people like me who are very open-minded and, and accepting and stuff... Um, you don't even notice that stuff anymore then. It's only when other people bring it up and they comment on their body and you're like, why does this matter? You know what I mean? So yeah, I would just say work on self-development and um, realize that what you think of yourself is at the end of the day what matters. You live in your own brain. You have to go to bed with yourself every night and lie in that bed. What's happening up here is all that fucking matters. Like stop letting other people have the power 
to make you feel like shit about yourself or or um it does go both ways though because someone might say something really nice about you so say if you do lose weight or you get in shape and then people notice and they really like it and all that kind of thing you know that is going to make you feel good but still at the end of the day like don't do those things just for other people to notice them and give you nice comments on them do it because you want to do it do it so you'll feel good um about yourself it's just a shift in mindset um takes a long time but again I speak so much more about this in my book I know I keep plugging it but I'm better when I write things down it comes out more coherently Kate said are you happy with your life right now oh yeah um I don't want to lose this state of mind I'm really scared of not being this happy because experiencing being happy like actually like happy not elated but just content you know every day I get out of bed um experiencing that after being miserable for fucking years it was just like oh and I don't want it to go away so um yes but it scares me I'm gonna end it there lads um please let me know if you enjoyed this give it a thumbs up and comment down below and um I will see you in another video very soon Cheers to me being back from my holidays and more regular videos, hopefully. Bye-bye. <laughs>